dear Psykill, did you ever encounter the Rogans again after their Martian adventure? Or they popped up here and there, but not in any kind of decisive way in any of the conflicts between Guardian and Renegade. Although, my ever-vigilant spy Snoop recently intercepted a number of Guardian documents, one of which tells the tale of the Rogans' voyage to Cortex, and how they became something of a thorn in that adult Magmar's side. It started with Boulder's tribe of granite goody-goodies, learning that there was a young rock trapped by a cave-in, deep in an underground mine shaft. Those dolts marched like lemmings right where Magmar wanted them, then acted surprised when their enemies sealed them away by collapsing the tunnels. Only the crystal-polite psychic marbles, warned by a vision of impending doom, managed to elude the trap. He used the transgalactic modem the Guardians had left behind to beg for assistance. The Guardians were far too busy dealing with my own malevolent machinations to send help, but Rifle and his other Rogans interlopers fought rode a command sensor and decided to intervene. The Rogan linked up with Marples, who was relieved to see them. When Scope asked why they couldn't get assistance from Solitaire and her Jewel Lords, he told them that the Jewel Lords had been lost for weeks, having disappeared while seeking the legendary lost library of Clastic Xandria. Rifle opted to split their forces. Marbles and Squirts would attempt to discover what Magmar had been up to and delay him if possible. Shots, gun, and pistol were to set off to rescue Boulder's band of pinhead pebbles. Rifle and his parasitic partner Scope were to journey to the petrified city of Pyrum Centopia in search of the Jewel Lords. Marbles and Squirts soon learned of Magmar's newest plan to seize control of the tectonics of Cortex with the massive tower tumbler. In doing so, though, they fell under the observation of the delightfully disgusting slimestone. The shameless silver sleaze gathered up sticks and stones and ran down the simpering scouts. Marvels converted to his rock form and rolled away. Slimestone in pursuit, Squirt was nabbed by the two-headed anthracite magnetite monstrosity and dragged back to Magmar's tower. Rifle and Scope encountered Snarly Gnarly, the enormous king of the evil rock gnarlies. Rifle found himself gored by the massive Gnarlebo and retreated into an ancient castle which was able to keep out the prowling Narla lions and flying Narla bats, barely. He nervously bided his time, as the rock Narly snapped at him through barred windows. Meanwhile, in eluding his Narly pursuer, Scope looked up in stupefied wonder at the rows upon rows of books and archival crystals arrayed before him amidst splendid columns and buttresses. In his panic, he had stumbled upon Clastic Xandria. He wandered about for a moment before encountering the comatose forms of the Jewel Lords, hooked into an ominously pulsating crystal. Marbles found himself backed into a corner by slimestone, with the latter advancing menacingly with his slime gun. Shotgun and pistol found the cave in only to find it guarded by the Rockasaur Spikestone. The massive horned beast drove them off, initially. They hatched a simple plan. Pistol was to act as bait to lure the tack of light triceratops away, while Shotgun would free the others. It was trivially easy for Pistol to get the beast's attention, but he soon found himself cornered in a box canyon, and the end seemed to be nigh. Oh, do tell what happened next. This story rocks. Oh, keep this up, and I shall grind you to powder. Sorry, I didn't mean to erode your patience. Watch it, tough guy. My deepest apologies. 
The last thing I tend to do is gravel you, my lord. Lots it. It's been nice knowing you. Wait, I'll cease. You've made your orders clear. As Crystal, I was confident you would cave eventually.